Okay, so regarding properly divergent sequences, here's the definition. Let A n be a sequence of real numbers. Um, first, we say that A n tends to infinity. You know, we write that the limit of A n as n is approaching infinity is infinity. If for every m which is greater than zero, there exists some natural number n, depending on m, such that if little n is bigger than n, then A n is greater than m. Uh, secondly, we say that A n tends to negative infinity, or, uh, and we write that the limit of A n as n is approaching infinity is negative infinity. If for every m which is negative, there exists an n which is greater than, uh, there exists a natural number n, such that if little n is greater than n, then A n is less than m. And finally, we say that a sequence A n is properly divergent, if either the limit as n is approaching infinity is infinity or it is negative infinity. Now let a n uh, be the following sequence, which is uh, a, uh, n squared for every natural number n, and let m be a positive number. Then by the Archimedean property, we may choose some natural number n so that uh, big N is greater than uh, square root of m. Now, uh, assuming that uh, little n is bigger than capital N, uh, it follows that uh, a n, which is n square, right, is uh, greater than n square, which is greater than uh, the square of the square root of m, which is m. Therefore, we can conclude that the limit when n square uh, of n square when n is approaching infinity is infinity. And this means that the sequence is properly divergent. All right, so let's consider the following sequence, n squared over n plus 1. And uh, note that uh, for any natural number n, uh, n squared over n plus 1 is equal to n squared over n times 1 plus 1 over n. So essentially, we factor n out of the denominator. And by properly canceling everything out, you get n over 1 plus 1 over n. Now, uh, 1 over n is less or equal to 1, since n is a natural number. And that gives us the following estimation, right? So, in other words, the reciprocal of 1 plus 1 over n is at least half. And uh, consequently, by multiplying the, former, uh, the latter inequality by n, we get the estimation on the screen. Now, for fix m, which is greater or equal to 0, appealing to the Archimedean uh, property, uh, we can choose n to be sufficiently large. And we'll come back to what's, how large n needs to be precisely in a moment. So, but for now, let's look at, uh, let's, let's assume that little n is greater than n, whatever big N is, then the quantity N square over N plus 1, which we try to estimate, is going to be bigger than N over 2. So to make the proper estimation, we need big N to be at least 2M, to be greater than 2M. So assuming that, then we get that the quantity is greater than 2N over 2. And um, uh, I'm sorry, it's greater than N over 2, which is then then greater than 2m over 2, and by properly canceling everything, we get m. So that tells us that um, the sequence n squared over n plus 1, where n is uh, ranging over the natural number, is a properly divergent sequence. In other words, the limit goes to infinity. Now, in this uh, theorem, this theorem is stated as follows. Any properly divergent sequence is unbounded. I'll prove half of the result and I'll leave the rest for you to prove at home. So the proof is pretty straightforward. Let us start by uh, considering a sequence of real numbers such that a n tends to infinity. Now, fix an arbitrary positive number. By assumption, we can choose a natural number n such that if little n is greater than n, then a n is going to be bigger than m. But what that means precisely is that the set of uh, real numbers containing a n 
is an unbounded set, and that means that the sequence AN is also unbounded. Now, at home, you will need to look at the case where AN tends to negative infinity, and playing the same game, you should be able to show that the corresponding sequence is also unbounded. Now, uh, we'll prove the following results. If AN is a sequence of positive real number, and if AN approaches zero, then its reciprocal one over N is going to tend to infinity. It will, will diverge to infinity. So assume that AN is a sequence of positive real number such that as n is approaching infinity, the sequence goes to zero. By the epsilon n, del, uh, by the epsilon n criteria, for every epsilon, uh, there exists some natural number n such that if little n is greater than n, then uh, uh, the absolute value of a n is going to be less than epsilon. Now, let m be a fixed positive real number and uh, put epsilon to be the reciprocal of m. So that's also a positive number. Now, by assumption, we can choose uh, n so that uh, a n, the absolute value of a n, is going to be less than 1 over m whenever n is approaching n because uh, epsilon is 1 over m. Now, but the latter statement is actually equivalent to uh, stating that 1 over absolute value of a n is greater than the reciprocal of 1 over m, which is m. In other words, 1 over the absolute value, 1 over a n, which is 1 over the absolute value of a n, is greater than m whenever n is uh, uh, strictly bigger than capital N. But then this means that 1 over a n is properly divergent. Okay, we'll prove that any monotone and unbounded sequence is properly divergent. Uh, as a starting point, let a n be a sequence of real numbers. And uh, we will assume that such a sequence is uh, increasing and is also unbounded. Now, let m be a fixed positive real number. Um, and let A be the set collecting all terms of the sequence. Uh, such, M cannot be an upper bound uh, for the sequence. Not for the sequence, for the set, I mean. Uh, as such, there exists some natural number N such that uh, a n is uh, strictly bigger than m. Now, on the other hand, since the sequence a n is assumed to be increasing, assuming that little n uh, is uh, greater than uh, big n, this will imply that a n is greater than a n, big n, which is greater than m. Therefore, uh, the limit of a n as n is approaching infinity is infinity. Now, let us assume that a n uh, is a sequence of real numbers which is uh, uh, decreasing and also unbounded. And we let m to be some negative number and uh, let uh, big A be the set of real numbers collecting all terms of the sequence. Since A is uh, bounded above by A1, because A1 is greater or equal to A2, and A2 is greater or equal to A3, and so on, A must be unbounded below. And what that means is that uh, big M right, cannot be, uh, negative m, I'm sorry, cannot be a lower bound. Now, what exactly does that mean? That means that you can find an element of the set, right, uh, which is smaller than negative m. So in other words, there exists a big n such that a n is strictly less than negative m. 
Now, assuming that uh, little n is um, greater than n, since the sequence a n is decreasing, then that means that uh, uh, a n is going to be less than a big n, which is, of course, less than negative m. And uh, this implies that a n tends to negative infinity, right? So the sequence a n is properly divergent either way. Now, uh, I will complete the lesson by offering some facts which will be left to, uh, uh, to prove as homework. The first fact sa states that if a n is uh, monotone, then uh, a n is either convergent or it's going to be divergent, or it's going to be properly divergent. Uh, this means that uh, whenever you have a monotonic sequence, the limit of that sequence is always meaningful. What does that mean? It means either the sequence is going to converge to some real number, or it's going to diverge to plus or minus infinity. But you cannot have a scenario in which the, 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 the limit is undefined. All right. The next result states that given two sequences, a n and b n such that a n is less or equal to b n for every natural number uh, n. Uh, if you know that a n goes to infinity, then automatically you can conclude that b n is also going to infinity. And if a n is less or equal to b n for every natural number n, and if you know that uh, uh, b n is uh, going to negative infinity, then uh, you know automatically that a n is also tending to negative infinity. And finally, given two sequences, a n and b n of uh, positive real number, if the ratio of uh, the sequences is convergent and is converging to some positive real number l, then uh, the following two statements are, are equivalent to each other. a n tends to infinity and bn tends to infinity as well. So your task here is to sit in a quiet place and to try in light of the definitions given to you, the results introduced to you, try to establish all of these facts, uh, the, the three facts, the three uh, statements uh, written there, try to establish them for yourself and write a precise and clear proof for all three of these statements.